today's painting is going to be inspired by Kandinsky. So this is our stage three in abstract painting. Um, one thing I wanted to do first um, was this. Okay, if we have our white, our cool and warm reds, yellows, and blues. My black, which is the one thing I wanted to just cover very quickly before we start today. Actually, I'm going to put these over here as we set up. Very important how you set up your, your palette and your station. We know that and have everything ready. So one thing I wanted to do as I move this here was introduce one extra color that you may want to have in your pal in your um, color box. And that is burnt umber. So I'm gonna do something very quickly and I'll just do it on the canvas because I can work right over it. So if you have it, you can work alongside with me. I just put a little bit of burnt umber on my palette. And did you know that mixing burnt umber with one of your blues, I'm not gonna tell you what it does. If you know, don't say it. Um, we're we're gonna just we're gonna do it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick my ultramarine blue, which is my warm blue, and we know it's warm because it has a little bit of red in it. So, um, or it's leaning towards the red. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of ultramarine blue. I have just about the same amount of burnt umber on my palette, and the key here is going to be. <clears throat> to mix them at a ratio where I'm going to start with a little bit less burnt umber and just mix in all of my blue here. And you're going to have to have, so you can go back and forth to see, and I know maybe right now you can't tell what this looks like. Again, it's really hard with these lights, but let's switch over to this camera maybe. Looks a little bit better. Um, there we are. So did you, do you notice how what used to be burnt umber, you could tell the difference. When I add blue, it looks black. And it's the way most of these artists actually created their black pigments. So it's one other way to limit your palette because when you think about it, we're looking at having just red, yellow, blue. You obviously need white. And instead of black, all you need to add is burnt umber. And you have black now. And it is, the beautiful thing about it is you can make this black bluer shade, grayer shade, greener shade. So the mixing, remember we used a warm blue, is going to give it just a little more of that bluish gray tint. If I were to use a cooler blue, I'm gonna have a darker, deeper black that is gonna be more of a, maybe a charcoal. The way to actually see this is, I'm gonna go ahead and just place a little bit on my on my canvas that I'm going to use today and to see how it's working the key would be to mix it up with a little white that's how we really know so I'm going to grab a little bit of white grab my brush touch just a little bit of this white and You see that beautiful gray? So it's one way, uh, and it absolutely, and I actually did a pretty good job um, mixing it right, I would say, right in the middle. So there's not a lot of bluish tint to this. It's, It would be hard to tell it apart from a, let me see if you can see it closer. There's a tiny little bit of a blue blue shade to it but that's a perfect gray there. So that means this black is a good is a good um, ratio in, in the mix. Now, if you were to just grab your black right out of the tube 
and place it by the side, you may be able to see some differences. The idea is for you to be able to control the shade and the range of your blacks in order to create these grays. Because remember, with the grays, we create the tones. So playing with that, I'm going to be doing a little bit of that today. Um, so we're going to get right into our painting. <clears throat> and I have them on screen. I'm going to try to work with this setup here. Hopefully it's big enough so you guys could see both the palette as I'm mixing. Um, sometimes I'll switch over to the close-up, as you can see. But we're, we're past color theory now. You guys are just birds out of the nest flying on your own with color. And today we're going to put it all together. So the main... Um, the main goal for today is to put together a composition, and I have two that are on screen, Composition 7, Composition 8 by Kandinsky. Now, we know from, if you watched the video, and if you know about his work, he had this ideal of putting all of art together in one, in the purest form of art, where we consider music, literature, um, now film, and painting, poetry, you name it. They each have their their versatility, their use, their different emotional um, strategy and kind of vibration in a way. So he's trying to put all of it together in terms of painting, making it all consolidated into one. So what we see here is his attempt to put all of the vibrations of musical co into color and just as the words say create a composition compose with it so the only thing i'm going to bring up today is what i just did i just created a shape of color on my canvas that's all you can do just like they said in the video color is limitless in your mind but once you apply it to a canvas it has to have a shape think about it whether it's a dot, a line, or something, it's going to it's going to have the color, but that color is going to be in a certain shape. So you cannot have color without a shape. Um, you could have drawings in black and white, like they said, in lines or shapes that have no color. So the boundaries created by that is what we're going to be focused on today and how they work off of each other on your entire uh, canvas. One thing that I, <clears throat> for those of you who want to test it out before we go to the canvas, would be to go ahead and set up your palette. So I am going to just add a touch of every color that I have here. So place my yellows next to each other. So I have my cadmium yellow and depending on how fast and how much of these colors I'm going to be using, I'm going to start with small little amounts. If you have, for example, an idea in your mind of, well, I'm going to be working more pinks. So of course you're going to have more of a reds and whites and open up that space in your palette for that color. Um, emotional sense that you want to bring in. So you have somewhat of a color in mind. So if you were to compare the one on top from the one on the bottom, we have a lot of warmer reds and pinks, some yellow ochres and browns, as compared and contrasted to the top where it's more primary pure color with a lot of black, I'm sorry, white background. And it's not necessarily a white background, it's sort of a cream um, that works in and around those shapes. So. Having a sense of that is what I'm going to do first. You generally would do this, um, and Kandinsky did it this way, which was to grab a piece of sketch paper. And if you ever have a chance to see his watercolors, his watercolor compositions, uh, they are very, very famous. And I could arrange, for example, what I'm going to be doing today with... Um, a thumbnail, but I want to kind of format it in the same size that I'm going to be working. So if you could see that right here, you could do this. I'm going to use two samples. Here's my 
first canvas, my second canvas. You don't have to be so rigid with these um, frames that I'm drawing here. You could be more just on loose sheets of paper. Um, so for the first one, how we get to abstract, you know, we're thinking about music in this case, but you could think, I don't know, um, I'm thinking of dawn and early morning because today there were some beautiful birds singing and sounds. So immediately it's going to take me to a place where I'm seeing some light blues. And again, we're not trying to depict a dawn or a morning. What I'm trying to do is begin to maybe think of shapes and get into somewhat of a mental state of let me begin to work with some more triangular shapes, how the light maybe feels like it's coming from below without having to draw a horizon, and how that would mix with a little bit of the warmth. But the truth is, the truth is here, I'm just really beginning to play with color, shapes of color, and maybe some line. But because it's watercolor, it allows me to do certain washes. I also have black, which is going to let this color mix. I could get a little more gestural. And how far is my palette going to go? I do want, you know, I'm thinking a little bit of that. Let's see. Somewhat of that. I love watching that dewy, just grass that is kind of translucent. And I could bring it just in and around. I want to think about how these colors begin to talk to them, to each other. So the truth is, at some point, I am going way beyond the image in my mind. I have no image in my mind. I want to begin to let the image appear just from laying down shapes of color and developing compositions. Now, I could take a few seconds, look at this, and think of, huh, things that might work better or just a little different. If they weren't so maybe harsh edged, maybe more softer edges, maybe less geometrical or maybe more delineated. Um, at some point, ideally, you want to get all words out of your mind and make it more about a feeling. And I know that sounds... It is easy, actually. It is easy for you to, in the well of human experiences, I believe everyone has this most amazing, not just one, but several beautiful novels inside. Just pick one of them. It could be that epic. It could be drama. It could be happy. It could be joy. It could be sad. It could be anything you can think of. You actually have it in you. And just going to it and maybe focusing on the general time or concept feeling of it is going to let you bring out the colors that will pop into your head. And it is, it is letting really the feeling flow. Now, if I were using too many colors, can I limit them to, like we did in week two, to just one? absolutely to maybe just two that would be amazing you are in command you are in control remember we looked at a little bit of color theory so i have some yellow and when i use, when i put a little bit of violet next to that yellow it does something very dramatic because they're opposite the color wheel so when i have yellow and i'm using violets something to think about. If I have blues and I bring in oranges, something also very dramatic. Um, obviously red and greens. 
strong and play off of each other. If you don't have watercolors, you could just maybe, hopefully, grab some color pencils and do the same thing. Just playing with maybe this one, I'm going to make it a little more gestural. And I'm going to say what I'm talking about. You know, those teachers that don't do as they say. I'm really going to just try to blank out and read a composition. In this case, it's more linear. It's a little tougher to create shapes of color with color pencil. It's not as fluid as with watercolor. But notice that I'm doing just a little bit of as it starts kind of like a flower blooming you begin to see it better you begin to see it clearer and then it just tells you oh a second here and a second there will point me to what the next color should be how big how small what shape how bright Notice that I'm staying mostly within shades and tints of blue and light grays. Um, so I could then bring in maybe some darker blues and black. And again, staying away from any type of idea. And as you begin to decide whether it's going to be more gestural, more geometric, more organic. This is how I would go about just thumbnailing composition of, of abstraction. And I'm already feeling it somewhere around here. Um, I do, however, want to play off of and show that we are inspired by Kandinsky. So if you're looking at your images and you're having trouble like, oh gosh, well, just like Kandinsky, I could add my triangles. Now I'm a little bit maybe oversaturated in this composition, which if it were music, it might sound like one of those battle hymn type Lots of drums and trumpets. Um, bring in a little more warmer colors with just softer, rounder, more organic shapes and negative space. And you begin to hear the music. That, I should say, is the actual goal for today to hear music. And again, just as I am looking at the image, playing a little bit off of it, you have two, I believe, beautiful options between the top and the bottom that will allow you to Anywhere within that range, go anywhere you can think of. Now, it doesn't have to be watercolor, or color pencil, anything you, else you can come up with. Um, now, for your thumbnails, you might discover that, ooh, I did some watercolor first layer here, and now I can add color pencil? So it's never ending, and I really like what this does. And you know what? I'm going to start doing more of these in watercolor. <laughs> so it just opens up an infinite um, number of possibilities. So there are my thumbnails. I know I'm kind of rushing through so we could actually get to painting. This is going to be a, a busy one today. And I guess my music sounds a little... I don't know why it's I, I I meant I meant it to be kind of softer. So there's something there in the in the gesture of it. 
that I'm going to pay attention to. But for my demo, I am going to somehow, I really, really lean towards the bottom uh, composition. That more organic, the, the one at the top feels to me a little more architectural, engineering-like. But it is beautiful, don't get me wrong. So with a couple of touches, maybe a mixture of them, I might want to play off of that. Um, and I'll follow some of the same forms and begin to just dance with it, see if I could hear the music. So, okay, I will continue. You could still work on your thumbnails. I'm going to continue setting up my palette with my, as you can see, in my cool and warm yellow. We have my cool... and my warm red. And I'm already feeling heavy load of paint on my palette. So I just want to cover all bases. And this is my warm blue and my cool blue. I will not be using black. I already have my black that I made with ultramarine and burnt umber. And I really want you guys to test that out and play with those. Um, if you have a warm and a cool blue and burnt umber to see the differences. Now, if you look at my palette, you can already see something with the value of the colors. Those that are darker and those that are lighter. And how I could just using these colors begin to arrange a composition in terms of value um, of those colors. And most importantly, today we're going to be using lots of white. So I'm going to do one dab here and just do one more over here. Because my colors will mostly be in the tint. Um... I feel like I have to use mostly tints of color, just like in um, in the sample that we have on screen at the bottom. Now, I could do, generally speaking, you would want to, and I'm going to do that now, just play with what's here, and it kind of dried already. I showed you one of the techniques once I begin painting, I have my color set up, and I'm going to be thinking about that just a little bit. But what I want to do is maybe consider a prime, a primer on my background, just kind of an underpainting. And I'm going to look at what color, and it's the color that I just had there. And I'm just spreading it, letting it take two areas. And maybe that's also going to have some effect in the balance of my painting. And I want to bring in another color. So for my color that I'm looking at, just to follow in the steps inspired by, I'm going to grab just a little bit of white, bring it over here to this pyrrol red, my, my warm red. I could see my first tint very light i wanted just a little more and this is how i'm going to be mixing my colors today now that might have gone just a little too far but that is a good one so just with this color i'm going to add kind of a base color a wash and i'm also thinking about technique and application here so whether it's I'm applying it really, really thin. It almost feels like watercolor in a way. And I'm going to think about some of these mixtures around the edges of these colors that begin to combine on my canvas. It is drying really fast. I could use that to my advantage. I'm going to mix just a little more with a little deeper red in it to expand the range and balance out 
Notice that I'm also mixing just a little bit so I don't have hard edges. And add more white. Bring it in. This one's going to be a little bit thicker. And therefore, the application is going to look, and it's becoming a tone. It's mixing with just a little bit of that black. So there I begin to see a little shift in the color. Let it bring in here. Now, the idea is to play off of be inspired. But if you feel you want to just, I want to copy it exactly like it is, that is absolutely, totally fine. It is a great actual exercise to just copy a master and see and feel what they were seeing and feeling. But I would suggest you're already there with all the work we've done so far. You're there to be able to maybe begin as a reproduction and kind of shift and take it where you feel it could go. So that's another option where you could just start it off closer to what we see on screen and then begin to maybe sh change, shift some of the shapes, some of the colors or some of the placement on the canvas. Perfect. Now I mentioned I was going to work on two canvases today. And what I might be doing instead is working on this canvas for my bottom composition, which is going to be more organic. And the other one I want to show you is, I've shown you this before, where I have, this is my acrylic color theory sketchbook, where you have all my tests, and I highly recommend doing this. Everyone, it's, it's a full class, really, that you, on your own, begin to discover, and extremely valuable resource to have at hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to use this page to on paper because it is watercolor paper but it is a nice kind of a 140 I believe and it's not even a hundred percent cotton but it's heavy enough that it holds acrylic and you could see it holds it really well and I'm gonna do that right here so while this dries a little bit I'm going to shift over Set it aside. And start on my second composition here. Don't want to get any acrylic on my sketchbook. So I am going to grab a ruler. I don't want to go all the way off the edges. I'm going to create just a little a frame. Maybe that's too big. Just playing off. I, I like using centimeters, so I'm doing a little one and a half, two centimeter frame. I could use masking tape as well. And if you're ready to work on two canvases, that is great. It might be rushing it a little, but it is a great experiment to, to try and work simultaneously while one dries. There we go. And I'm just staying consistent with 
because I've done framing on all the previous pages, I want to make sure this one stays nice and neat, just as, as the ones I have before. And just doing quick measurements. And there we have it. Now my next decision is I'm working on one and I'm thinking of it honestly because of the way it's set up with the camera as a vertical composition and I think I'm going to stick with it and it could maybe flip this way. Ooh. I'm already seeing something heavenly here. Reminds me of some some of these renaissance skies. So there you go. Try to clear some of those thoughts out of my head. Maybe just use the emotion of it. The feeling of it. So for this one, I might want to go a horizontal composition. And I think that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have to move this just a little bit. A little bit off camera here. And there we go. So you might not be able to see some of the colors here, but I'll walk you through them. And it's going to be very simple. I want to... As I have my frame, I would generally do this in ink. Some of us a little more organized and detailed than others. I'm not one of those. But I try. I give it a I give it a shot. I give it an effort. And here we are. So this one I could actually take very far into the composition. And you're welcome to use ruler. He might have used ruler in some of these. Um, so I have some of these smaller ones. Because we're using acrylic, you're also welcome to use ink. Um, it'll play off of, if it's acrylic ink, it actually works really well and, and it goes um, it goes with, with your acrylic paint. So the next question is, is am I gonna use pencil? Am I gonna use charcoal? Am I gonna use ink? Well, that will be up to you. And just taking inspiration from this image, I begin to see just rhythms and circular shapes that may not be as geometric as his, but what I'm seeing is less saturation in the background. So what I want to do here is work the background kind of in the same way he is, that cream, maybe a little yellower, uh, but a very ultra light tint of it. And just have some of these... Geometric forms. For some reason, immediately I began to think about solar systems and planets, the way they align as I, as I put down some of these circles. And I'm thinking maybe it could be a circle of circles, just a hint, with some... Just a tad bigger than the others. I'm making my lines maybe a little too light because I'm thinking of maybe going back over it with ink. Sometimes you can actually play by numbers. So I want seven circles, five triangles, three squares. All these different types of compositions. Is there a reason why? Because that's my birthday. You, you never know. It just comes into play. Uh, I just like the number nine. So there, nine triangles, nine squares, nine circles. And it's composition number nine. Anything that kind of gets you going in terms of, oh, that's a good feeling. Um, now, does it have to be a good feeling? Sometimes there's emotional drama in in the content that you're putting to it so depending on what type of color vibration um some of us may feel it like for example the bottom one it almost looks like a battle it could be uh, there's so much I call it chaos but so many movement and rhythm going on down there um because of the lightness of the color the size of some of the shapes it is, it is a little friendlier. 
So you can always consider that. The size and the colors is going to be crucial. I like some of these semicircle, but I'm going to make them more kind of oblong, like ellipses. So some of my shapes are already in the realm of I should be doing this. And I think I'm going to go for it, gutsy, using some ink and a brush, not a pen, because I want to see how that plays off. So dipping my brush in my ink, there's no way of walking it back. It's going to be what it, whatever I lay down. And other art movements also of the period, you have to consider context. Everything that was going on in the early 1910, 1920s, not to mention the invention of everything. Everything from the camera, which was still recent, but movies, electricity, radio, Airplane, cars, industry, World War I, a whole world at war. All these things that somehow influenced, one that is, is forgotten, the art world really, really brings, brings it into focus, was the study of the mind. So Sigmund Freud and... And his studies of the human mind, psychology, all his theories. Lots of artists like Kandinsky and then the ones that followed. For example, with surrealism, they used some of these ideas where your subconscious has so much in it, so much to say, you could just let it Kind of reveal itself by quieting the mind. And they call that in surrealism it had a name and it was kind of like an automatic drawing. So you just let the hand go and make marks. And then we begin to see flowers or dragons or who knows. That is your subconscious mind. In a way, it's a theory and kind of wanting to reveal what we know is in there. I'm considering thickness, direction, angle of some of these shapes. Considering the placement, thinking about space between them, obviously the size of my entire composition. Thinking a little bit about intersection, juxtaposition, balance. And what I'm trying to do here is, in a way, not think about it, but begin to see it. What? How does that make sense? So as I'm trying to really quiet certain parts of my mind, that frontal lobe that wants to be in control, it's more, more the left brain, really, symbols and words. have a perfect blend, a perfect mixture of intuition and logic. And some may say, well, that's impossible. How does that, how does that even work? Well, it, it is, it is amazing. But if anybody, if anything can do it is your, your mind. 
how I could switch in one instant, microsecond, from intuition, feeling, to a quick logic analysis of space, shape, um, almost mathematical arrangement. And in a way, you, you may be looking for that as well. How some of these shapes begin to really just interact with each other. You can see the composition coming together. And actually, I believe this was a good choice to go on paper, watercolor paper, with a little bit of ink and a brush. Knowing a little bit about geometry, in this case, is very helpful. So some of your different triangles... and what they can do what they what they can do for your composition in terms of size and angles at, at some point you need to kind of pause and hear the music I'll be saying that a lot really just hear the music make an effort I just had this thought I almost in a way began to see just a little bit of I don't want to say it, it'll be maybe, but it was shapes of Picasso's coming together. Not my intention. And your mind really begins to see things and how that influences the next element of your composition. These are things you want to be aware of and not let it take over. You want to be in control. Or give up control completely. That's also an option. Perfect. I think up to this point I'm going to I'm going to really just Take a pause. And it'll all be about color after this. And I think I have something nice going here. It feels right. It feels me. Thank you, Kandinsky. But I did somehow manipulate and makes made some of those elements mine with color i will be really excited about where i could take this okay so let's switch back over to this and give it a, just a second to dry so there we are because i use just water there's areas that i have to be careful still moist still leaves a mark um, I could remember, use a paper towel, lift, do some of that nice texturing. Now, would I be able to use ink on here like I did in the previous one and maybe have me going with some of those elements and make that easier? Absolutely, that would be. Remember, you make the rules. 
you get to say. Now, the other way would be to actually use acrylic. But this one would be very fluid. So I'm going to use some of this black. And remember, you have these mediums that add fluidity. So the flow aid or this acrylic glazing, which is much more, it's, it's, it extends your line and also allows you to make it into glazes. So it turns it almost into kind of an ink, if you feel the consistency. Not so much toothpaste, but more runny, a little more ink. I didn't do it, but I'm going to see some elements that I'm going to want to maybe add. And now I'm having a feeling that they're too light. I want them to be darker. So it might be a little thicker. I might have to work with a little more patience. And remember, I use that mixture. My black is... That burnt umber ultramarine blue. So I'm gonna have a little, a little fun with it. And here I go. It's just beginning to look at the composition. Now, just so you know, I am looking at the Kandinsky. I'm getting a vibe from it. But in my composition, I'm kind of just disconnecting from it. And I mean the Kandinsky. And just one thought in my mind. Well, if that's possible. Shape. I picked the color. Now I'm thinking about shape. How to compose it. There's, I don't know if you see it, but there's kind of brush strokes and textures on my canvas. I'm playing off of that just a little bit. With some of these lines that are already on the canvas... Going back to week one, week two, as I develop color, color sense, I also want to think about technique of application. So am I going to make it thicker? Am I going to wash it down, glaze it? Am I going to lift or drip it, splash it? Palette knife it. Really just trying to shut it off. And what is it? That thing that sometimes holds me back, those thoughts. But once again, kind of letting intuition take over with just maybe a pause. As I move along, to be able to recognize what is sounding, because we are hoping to listen to some music, what sounds right and what doesn't. Thinking about one of those clarinet shrieks that make your, you know, the hair in your arm stand up. That kind of thing. You want to pay attention so it doesn't, so it doesn't happen. Kind of develop your notes. Mine seem to be a little high pitched, lots of them on the high side so I could bring them a little deeper, lower with bigger, darker shapes. That's what kind of sounds about right. Not just monotonous. Mark making, but a little variation in the texture. A little variation in the value of the color. And I want to blend some of this color into, and I think I have it going. 
So having a strategy about how I'm going to work around some of these colors. With this one, I'm going to want to go from darkest to lightest because I could work over it. But I don't want to cover anything that's going to be lighter with dark. It'll overpower it. So a lot of empty area space is going to be used in my composition. So from here, I would want to go to blues. And again, just like in a composition, you want your violins and the, the cello comes in. Nice, soft, quietly. Now, do I want to use, here's the key, why I wanted to show my palette the whole time. Am I just dipping my brush in my color and coming straight here? You have that choice. But what I want to see you do today is take your color and push it. Notice the difference here into tints, shades. Make your own music, make your own notes. It obviously is okay to just take the color, but you have to be honest with yourself. Am I just cutting a corner? Or is it really because I want just that plain out of the tube color? I'm not saying it's wrong. It's, it's a matter of why are you choosing? Why are you making that decision? Now my shift here in technique. Notice how I go from a little thicker application of paint to washed down. And I could also mix my colors on my palette. Or, ready for this one? On my canvas. And look at that. I could bring in my color and just mix it on my canvas. That's what he did. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> new realms are open. Managing the arrangement of colors on your palette and then being able to play with it as you bring it to your canvas and have them just mix exactly the way you want them on your canvas. I'm going to need a little more of this just heavier, not necessarily darker, but these pinks that are going to be crucial. And I could also play with them. The tendency to work a little looser for me. I'm trying to slow it down. And that could actually hurt the overall composition. You want to have that energetic feel, whether you're really paced, you slow down. If that's your choice, or if you have more of an energetic brush stroke, bring just a touch of this black right here to a shade of ultramarine blue. And then bring that in right in here. And you could begin to see, uh, I remind you, like in that, in that video, there's horse riders and angels and angels with trumpets. You name it. We're putting it. We're putting it in just as beautiful shapes of color and nothing more in your mind you can make up the other kind of narrative as long as you stay focused on that essential thing shapes of color it 
get another paper towel. So I'm sticking to the blues here. And I have several, maybe using one or two different brushes. And that makes a big difference. Maybe using your palette knife. Very, very interesting. What happens when I bring in just a little bit of these two blues together? Very nice. Very rich. I just water it down a little more. If you're not happy with it, you could simply lift it, hopefully quickly, before it settles. And just wash it in. We had that original black gray going on there. That actually can look really interesting as you begin to layer your colors. Let me go back into just a little bit of this pink because I, I want to see how it plays off some of these darker blues. Making sure your colors don't muddy as you mix them on your canvas is also crucial. If you're having too much color mixing, they eventually begin to include all the colors. And those colors are going to begin to get brown, grayish, muddy. The thing to avoid is muddy. Neutrals and grays, beautiful. Muddy, we, we want to stay away from. Unless it looks intentional. But most of the time... It's recognizable. We can see that accidental factor of, of those muddy colors. I'm coming up with this beautiful color here. Just turned a little greener. So I'm adding a little bit of my warm yellow to that burnt umber that I had on my palette. And I just added a touch of white. And immediately I saw somewhat of a green-ish hint to it but look at that that color just in terms of music what do you hear that was the question what variation of color can i add to this Notice that adding white, creating those beautiful tints. In my case, at least. Definitely hear the music. Just spreading a little more of this color. Thinking about that texture shape, I could actually thin it down and layer it over some of those darker areas, making just a little more, causing visual interest, which is always good. Some of these blues feel a little too... out of the tube I'm gonna want to have I want, I'm kind of wanting to shift the look of some of these blues but first I want to test out what this pink is going to look like and I love it just a deeper if you see it here with my cool red, that's the quinacridone red, that some of these pinks that will eventually 
be pumped up into actual full, and I'll show you now, red, and how that actually just really blends in beautiful. Some of these reds, if you just add a touch of the orange. I'm sorry, a touch of yellows begins to create those beautiful orange. We're going to go into the greens. There's some there. But I want to see if maybe it's a little less of that burnt umber and more of this yellow. And I'm going to my cool yellow. Before I mix a red into it, I want to see a tint of this yellow. And this I should I would say for last. These are like the final finishing touches with your lightest color. But I just want to test it out, see how it plays. And there they are. Just very nice. I could see it. Here comes touch, a touch of Let's see. I want to see the warm red would probably play off a little bit better. And I could do tests, really. That's the one. It begins to kind of have a fleshy tone to it. I like it. And hopefully it plays a little bit better off that blue. change this brush just a little bit bigger broader brush strokes here notice some of these mixtures on the canvas some of them are transparency but some of them are coming through and you begin to see a little bit of some of that green maybe add just a touch just a touch more red kind of turn it into a somewhat of an orange more than that pale skin tone and develop a little bit of that as well Retouch that with a little burnt umber. And if we go by that formula, which is a good way, it applies to abstract. You go from biggest, we started with that complete overall underpainting, that pink and black. From bigger to medium to small. You want some of these general bigger brush strokes early on. That's what I'm doing now. Now that I kind of have an overall sense of, of my composition. Having the patience to let some of these colors settle, dry not rush right inside or through them, over them. Now I'm going with ultra, ultra light pink, almost white tint. And that's going to be right in here, but it's a little thicker than what's already there having just a little patience to touch it on in the right areas not overdo it here's where we begin to think about that overcooking metaphor you have lots of great ingredients they're cooking you want to kind of let them simmer let them little by little give them time I'm going to do a big swatch of 
this shape needs to be a little bit darker. So in music, you also have that arrangement term, which is what I'm doing now. I'm rearranging some of these elements as I begin to see the overall where you need more of something or less of something comes into play. Now, I feel like I want to give this just a little extra time to dry. There's a little bit of heavier, thicker paint. Let me see if I can maybe move a little bit from those darker black blues. Didn't really overdo with the blues, but switch my brush. Medium round. And I'm going to look at maybe adding a couple of violets. Very... A little quieter so I'm gonna move that over here see how we do with that and with a little cool red oh that looks beautiful already and I do have some of this that wants to go right in here maybe wants to go right in here complementing some of these darker areas almost blending right into them and also just a tint of it such a beautiful color one of the great exercises is to really get to know your violets one of those very difficult spectrums to to own So when you have your blues and your reds and you're dealing with warm or cool, blue, red, developing your violets, it's not as easy as it looks. It takes, it takes experimenting and analyzing as you, as you get more familiar with them. As I mentioned, when we have violet... And there's an overall yellowish sense to, to this composition. I want to bring a nice light tint of yellow. Ultra, ultra light. Lighter than anything I have on my canvas. And just play off of that. And this might be early for this stage, but I just want to see if that's the right one, and I think it is. And notice how that violet just becomes a co-star. And at some point you start thinking, as you move along your composition, you start seeing it, and you're beginning to think more in terms of brush stroke, technique, application i'm going to go with some shades of red and i need some thicker ones here so i'm going to grab some of this and a little bit of this black just a tiny bit darken this red so between those plays of tints and shades and if you want to play with some of those grayer tones what i'm going to do with this is and i think it looks great i'm going to bring it in just around some of these inner darker Areas of black. Oh, that's playing off beautiful. So it's not just a big black mass. There's sound. Definitely there's sound within this shape here. Complementing it. Again, not to overdo it. Just 
changing the song there a little bit as that red came out of that black screaming I think we need that here too Lighten up some tints of it. It's going to get really nice and smaller and thinner as I move along. Let me grab some of this cool yellow, cool red, create a nice orange and th these oranges can go in so many beautiful directions and I think is that nice I'm not gonna say neutralizing effect but it is because just such a nice warm it's almost in the in that area midway through the cool and hot of the color wheel immediately I see the effect especially when you play them off of these blues so I'm thinking about where these oranges go because of the arrangement of blues touches of blue that I have on here bring in just a little extra yellow mix it on my canvas and what I'm dying to see now is a different orange from a cooler I'm sorry warmer yellow so I have a warm yellow and I'm gonna mix a little bit of warm red into it and you'll see the difference in in the heat the temperature of these oranges if you could see them on my palette look at that the coolness and then the hotness of these two oranges. You can place them right next to each other and wow. Look how beautiful that looks. I want to expand it a little bit into here. Maybe bring a tint of white and just lighten it up. It turns again that nice fleshy tone. But just like Kandinsky, trying to have those colors take up not just the form but almost into a space creating that sense of background or blending into the background <clears throat> I really like this pink here so I'm going to make just a little more and it's going to be the ultra lightest tint I can make with a little bit of water to thin it down even more. And I'm going to bring that right in here. It needs to be lighter. It needs to be way lighter. Almost white. Oh, there it is. So again, listening, hearing that music, finding that note. As it, as it was said in the video, there's a piano, there's keys and hammers, and then there's your fingers, and then there's a soul. That when you put them all together, it's inevitable. It vibrates. It does this thing to you. Nice little nice variation. And as you become a composer of colors, you don't want to stay too focused on one area. <clears throat> you want to have a sense of the overall 
<clears throat> excuse me, the sound covering all of the areas. See how, how much I've forgotten about this here? It could get really ignored, <clears throat> forgotten, and then it could it could make me pay the price for ignoring it. It could become <clears throat> a little stagnant and then heavier for me to bring the composition to match it, if that makes any sense. So not forgetting about the overall. Don't get too focused on one little area and stuck in it to then realize, whoops, this area. Now I have to darken or lighten this area. Then that is going to change everything else or just create a little bit of that unbalance. So I'm really more focused on technique of application at this moment. Making sure some of these brush strokes and the colors have that transparency or that thickness that I would want. So they're playing off of each other. Now I'm going to mix this cool yellow with touches of this warm red. And I will have another variation of orange that I could then have also tints of. And look at that. Just bringing that in. This is the area that I was really focusing on and I wanted a little bit more of this orange down here. Voila, that is nice. That's what it needed. And I, I mentioned that because I was doing it. Getting a little too... You can get infatuated with an area and forget about another one. And it's, hey, don't forget about me. Good thing we didn't here. Still. And it almost happened beautifully in a way where it begged for that color to be the one. And I think it just brought everything really nicely into balance. Just a touch of a little red, a little more red into it and bring that up here. So now you, you feel, at some point you begin to feel like you're in control of this whole symphony. And why not just a little bit of that pure hue of color here and there, just at, at the final touches. Oh, that one came out nice. I want to show you guys that up close when I can because it's a different method of application. And most of the time we get caught up in that <clears throat> not mixing our colors like we should. And then it becomes a little dull. All the sounds are just the same. There's no rhythm. Because we're at the red stage, I'm going to have to save some of this yellow for later and mix just a touch of blue here create some greens. So I'm using cool yellow with, I'm sorry, warm, cool yellow with warm blue. That's what I'm doing. 
and I have this nice, it seems a little, just a little too generic. I'm going to add just a touch of burnt umber, neutralize it. You could always add a little bit of red, just a touch, and you'll see a drastic. Because they're complementary, you'll see the shift from a somewhat generic hue of green to just a very vibrant, earthy, Beautiful. Brownish hue of it. Bring a little more yellow. Play off of that. Mix it on the canvas. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow and a little extra blue. Have some of these greens. Just darken. And the way this green is playing off of this orange, it just, with that touch of brown, the burnt umber, it really holds it together. So my overall composition is looking <clears throat> very gestural. I like some of the shapes. I do feel like I need harder edges. In some areas so I could come back and do the work that I was hoping for with the smaller busier area really having the patience to wait and look for that color as it's supposed to be And what's happening now is my other composition is saying, hey, what about me? So I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes. Bring back composition number two. This one should run a little smoother. This really squeezing the space. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. Now for this one, I mentioned I wanted this kind of overall. I think it's going to be warm red. I'm going to use this yellow here to create usually cadmium, a cadmium red, a cadmium yellow. Give you this nice cream. It's very light orange, but with a tint of it, it becomes this kind of very pale cream, almost a skin tone. This one happens to be a little more yellow than what I was hoping for. Let's add a little more white. What I want to do here is pretty much attack the space first. And I want to do it with some water. Oh, that's really creamy. So I'm going to add some white to it. Now I'm working around the marks that I laid down first. Let's see if I can push this a little further up. I am going to have to move this a little bit more to the side. There we are. <clears throat> so as you notice here, My idea is to just work within that frame that I set up around some of these marks. I'm not too concerned about 
going in or through them, around them. There's a little space between the space and that shape. I want to have somewhat of an overall, and this one here lightens a lot, more water. I could even go over some of those shapes carelessly, just they'll show through. And I, it's not so much about the line. Some of them are, so I'll try to preserve that. But the other ones are just the shape. And this one will definitely dry a lot faster. Bring in a little more white. Make that color creamier. Just to create that sense of floaty, not pure white background space. And the other question here is integrating what is obviously shapes in space to the space where some of those shapes can actually be hinted as the space. Are some of you saying, what did he just say? <laughs> when we deal with shapes of color, sometimes what we see here in this composition are suggested shapes that play more as space. Because they happen to be just bigger, they're not defined. So you notice within the inside or outside of a line, just the way the color is applied can read as a shape and in a way as space. And you can do that. You can really get your, your work and your technique to very easily do that. Now my ink is supposed to be permanent ink, but I'm noticing there's a little, maybe there were some areas that were just a little too, a little heavy with it. So I gotta be careful around some of these lines. Don't wanna rush or brush too hard either. Grab a little more white. And some of this color could really blend in, mix very, very nicely with this background now. So I could always bring a little bit of a lighter shade of it. I mean a lighter tint. and mix it just over this color. Notice, notice how it's getting a little lighter. Adding more water to it, very helpful. Creates that transparency. I really want this area here to be the lightest because it's kind of the busiest. So notice I'm not even going in or around, I'm just going right through the lines. And it works. Adding touches of white, pure white, over that color, having it blend in as it's still wet with a little bit of that water. And in a way, creating music. There's a little sound going on. And that's what I was hoping for. Now, some of these shapes, I do want them probably just clear so I could come in. And if I wanted to, I could just go, once the acrylic is dried, I could go right over <clears throat> some of these lines with black ink or black acrylic once again. Think of it as this was the pre, the underpainting, the sketch under the color. 
And now I'm just trying to bring it, put it all together. This is the one that I want to just really bleed out. And I am so happy with this. It almost looks done. <laughs> and you guys think I'm kidding. No, it, it, I would be very happy with the more minimalistic you are in terms of shapes and color, the easier you'll find yourself finding success with your work. The more we begin, it's that overcooking thing. The more we begin to add and the more we want to just push it, it'll push back. Okay, so saving some time. That was a little easier than I thought. Give it a few minutes. We'll finish it last, but there it is. Just a quick wash, kind of the background. Maybe it is a little darker than I thought I wanted to, that cream color, but I think it'll, it'll, it'll work out nice. And now for the finishing touches here. It's all about technique, really. It's about blending these colors, maybe having the right brush, bringing in some palette knife. Let's see what that does. I want to be careful with all of the work that you've done, not, you know, lose it, because once you do something to it, it could be lost. And that's one of those places you do not want to be where you had something really nice going and then just in a in a second you could do something that covers it or unbalances it and you lose it. So with everything I have here, all these sounds and my palette kind of pretty well developed here, I really want to go into a very intuitive mode. Kind of going with the flow. I see the colors on my canvas. I see what color needs to come in. I pick it and then I'm thinking more about technique, about flow, about application. I slow down a little. I think of my strokes, brush strokes. I begin to see how one area of color is playing off of the other more and more clearly I could re assemble rearrange some of these color combinations I could retouch some of those areas of color when I add a little more burnt umber here it almost tells me I need more white right here and then that makes this orange well I need more red or more red and burnt umber in my color. So we'll do that. Notice that I'm using a more systematic, and in a way it's kind of a harmonious application so it's not all over the place it begins to look oh okay i rhythmic I, I i see how some of these patterns so let me put this a little up close you see how the brush strokes there's a rhythm to them you begin to see their consistency and that's the key word consistency in terms of application and you you really want to put all those things into play I could bring in, come 
right back in in some of these areas. And there is no better place to be than right here, right now. This is what we were working towards, to be right here. Just hearing that music and fine-tuning it would be the word. Fine tuning and kind of like tuning an instrument, really, just making that sound really clear, sharp or deep, but clear, intentional. As we continue looking through our color. Arrangement. Always good to have and switch. Switch your brush, make sure it's clean. Really focused on that consistency of brush stroke. I'm really enjoying this blending of color on the canvas, allowing me to see really how it could come together. And for a second there, you feel like Kandinsky. Which is a good feeling, very good feeling. The sound, how images begin to just pop in. Keep your mind quiet and clear, focusing on minimal brush stroke, technique, your shapes, and how it's all coming together. Now this technique, I just figured, it's going to take an overall pass. And you're going to have to have the discipline to give it its time. Give it the time. Maybe, maybe step away for a few minutes. Give it a little time and space, a little distance. Look at it, look at it. Let it speak back to you, hear what it says. It probably would be the absolute best decision. Let it dry, maybe a little too, as well. So you could come back, because a lot of these that I'm trying to work in here, which are more fine-tuned, thin, lines of color are only going to work if everything else is pretty set and dry. I feel like I, I need to also re set my palette and do some tones, some grays. 
need to come in here and not just grays i mean mixtures of gray and color to create a just a little more tonality i have lots of nice shades i have great tints but i feel like we need a little extra tonality overall which is kind of neutralizing the vibrancy of a lot of these colors this here for a second I want you to kind of see here oh, what happened sorry about that there we are just wanted to show you a close-up of what was going on with some of these brush strokes. And how it all at this point becomes purely or mostly application, technique of application. Lots of the choices. with color are pretty resolved. It's just a matter of getting your, your brush strokes down and clarifying a little bit what's going on with these shapes. Okay, so at this stage, I am going to give it some time and space. And I would recommend you do the same, depending on where you are. Uh, maybe you're finished. Maybe you want to give it a couple of, uh, just a few minutes and six feet distance to look at it for a minute or two, and then come back and give it another half hour, hour of fine tuning, fine line, finishing touches. Um, let me jump back to, very quickly to composition number two. And for this one here, because I'm working on paper, I just wanted to show you really quickly um, what kind of colors. This we do see on the sample has a little more of those primary color feels. Um, I wanted to show you just how easy when you work with geometric, creating a composition is going to be, and I want this one to, to have a little bit of that glazing transparency but once again it comes down to once you select your color once you begin to arrange your notes the technique how you're going to apply this notice that i'm doing it really flat i could go a little bit thicker creating kind of dimensionality and just with that one touch Notice what happened there. Just that one touch of color. And I'm using color right out of the tube. I could, just for fun, tint it. Which I always do. It's just, I got so used to it. It's kind of like a personality trait now. There's no way I, it doesn't feel right unless it's clear and intentional. The way, the, what you do with color, how you can just touch it, mix it, make it your own, feels more right. And I have to admit, sometimes it's just, I'll be honest, being lazy, 
I just want to ah, I just want to paint and not mix your color and take that extra step just lift a little more I'm gonna bring in just a little bit of green here which it's a color that shouldn't doesn't feel like it goes there but just because there's a little bit of juxt juxtaposition there. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Play off of this red with a big, nice green. More translucent. And overall, I'm mostly thinking about that nice cream colored background that I, that I set up. to kind of point me in the right direction. And it's just having fun with it at this point. So I think we're gonna stop right here. You can see where it's going. You can see how we got there. I'm trying to get two done in, in an hour and a half. It's doable. I might have gone a little too big. This one really, I'm going to come back and finish. It, it, it most likely requires an, another hour and a half of really just fine tuning, fine detailing, more careful mixing, smaller shapes, smaller lines, better technique, maybe different strokes with um, palette knife or you know, fine hair thin lines of color and some black you'll see. Uh, as we layer the second, third, fourth layer uh, to bring it um, closer to finish. Um, and then obviously here where it's just, it almost felt more like a, like a um, coloring, just fill in the color. And that's a good thing. Once you get that composition and you have a sense of arrangement, just filling in the colors, see what feels right, where it goes and what it does. Is, is actually what we were looking for. So I hope you guys really enjoy this. This was great um, intro to abstract and that you got a good sense where we're literally working with the absolute masters. If you remember, Mondrian and Kandinsky are the names to go and research maybe a little more, get more familiar with, imitate, and as a starting point, just... Take it from there and make it your own.